Thank you for joining us for a look at Birds of a Feather, Western North America, a rather thematic card game that we brought home from Origins thanks to Snowbright Studio. So Birds of a Feather, Western North America is an actually an update, a re-release of a previous game, Birds of a Feather, which was published in 2015 by Nothing Sacred Games. Now, this new version is by the same designer, Teal Fristo, and features artwork by Trevor Fisto and Quill Colat. It is being published, as Sean just mentioned, by Snowbright Studios. Improvements in the new game include new graphic design and improved rules for two- and three-player games to reduce the amount of luck at low player counts and make the game more strategic. Now, speaking of player count, this card game plays an impressive one to seven players with games taking under half an hour at all player counts. It's listed as age eight plus, but I think even younger kids could play this if maybe not play it well. So in Birds of a Feather, Western North America, the players are birders traveling to different habitats, attempting to see the most diverse amount of birds possible. The game features five different habitats and seven different birds that can be seen at each, some more rare than others. Each round, players are going to pick a card from their hand to go spot. Then everyone reveals their card and everyone checks off every card in play that's at the same habitat they just visited. The birds just played linger for one round, giving other players a chance to visit those habitats and see those birds. After players are down to one card, everyone tallies up their points and the winner is determined. This is a very environmentally friendly game. Not only are all the components made from recycled materials, you also won't find any plastic, except for some stickers sealing the box for shipping retail that couldn't be re re avoided. No shrink wrap on the cards or on the box. In addition, part of the proceeds from each game sold is donated to Journey North, which is a science program about migration patterns. Game component-wise, this small box contains a pack of 60 cards, a thick pack of double-sided scorecards, and a well-laid-out rulebook. This is nestled into a functional cardboard insert. Now, there's also a piece of promotional material inside for Tea Time Adventures. This is a tabletop role-playing game from the same publisher, which on the back includes a full apple turnover recipe, making this only the second game I've ever played that includes a recipe. As for the rulebook, it's pretty good, but I do suggest you read through it twice if playing with less than four players, as there is a rule about drawing additional cards from the deck each round we missed on our first few plays with three. Now, one tool you won't find in the box, but which can be very useful, is the free Birds of a Feather Western North America app, which is available on Steam, iOS, and Android. It gives you a way to play solo that works rather well, as well as providing a scoring app that works really well, doing the math for you and saving the sheets in the box. Now, one thing that's almost better on the app when playing solo is that when you play a bird card there, it actually gives you a whole bunch of information on the card about that bird. I thought it was really cool, but I also have to give them props for not including all that on the actual cards in your hands, because that would just make them messier and harder to read. Now, while the quick summary you gave earlier pretty much sums it up, yeah. how about we now go over how to play Birds of a Feather in a bit more detail? All right, getting started here simple. Deal everyone a hand of cards based on the number of players, which in most cases means the entire deck. Give everyone a score sheet or have them open up the app, and you're good to go. Each round, players pick one card to play and place it face down on the table. After everyone has placed their card, you flip them over and see where everyone went. These are called the arriving birds. Now at this point, grab your score tracker and tick off all the birds you can see. Those are the ones that are the arriving birds that just got played that match your habitat on the card you just played, as well as any cards on the table that are left there from the last round. Next, you clear away the previous lingering birds, and that round's, round's arriving birds are pushed to the center of the table to become a new set of lingering birds. Like That's pretty much it for the basic rules. Play birds, check what you spotted, remove the lingering birds, the new birds linger from around. Now, to keep things interesting, each habitat includes one raptor card. When a raptor card is revealed, it scares away any lingering birds in its habitat, preventing anyone from spotting those birds that round. Play continues until everyone has one card left in their hand, and then everyone adds up their score. Every bird you spot is worth one point, except for eggs, which are worth none, and the ace bird, for which each habitat is worth two. You get three bonus points for spotting all of the birds in a habitat. The player with the most points wins. Ties go to the player who competed the most sets, and further ties are determined by the most rare bird spotted. 
Now, there is one small twist to these rules when playing with two or three players. With these low player counts, when revealing birds, you also flip over one or two cards from the deck, so there were always at least four arriving birds each round. In addition, the rulebook also includes variants to make the game more strategic and less random. First is the migra migration variant, where players pass a number of bird cards to their left before the first round of play. Next are the modified two- and three-player rules, which are the new thing in this printing of the game, besides the artwork. These have players draft their hands at the start of the game, as well as making a draw deck at the same time. With two players, each player is going to have their own draw deck, whereas with three players, together you'll create a draw deck. Finally, there are rules for solo play, which has you picking a card to play, drawing three cards from the deck for the other arriving birds. Everything else stays the same, except at the end of each round, you discard a card and draw a new one from the deck. There's also a chart where you get a rank based on your total score. Now, trust me, that makes this game sound way more complicated than it really is. That took way too many words to explain what I could teach you in a couple of minutes, possibly even under a minute. Once you see this and play this game, it just makes sense when you see it in front of you. Indeed, essentially, it's just a five suit, seven number card game where you're trying to match suits played to collect all seven cards from as many suits as you can. Though I will say they have themed it very well. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a painted on theme to an abstract card game. Now, we discovered this game at Origins 2023, where Deanna did a short demo with the game's creator. Now, first off, I have to give Snowbright Studios credit for having one of the most inviting and welcoming booths at the con. This really was something to see, because Deanna did this demo sitting on a park bench surrounded by flowers and vegetation that made you feel like you were chilling in the outdoors. And a very family-friendly area with coloring areas for kids even yeah snowbright prides themselves on being an lgbtq plus game studio dedicated to creating heartwarming games that spark imagination and inspire action and you really got that vibe from their booth now while the booth and people we met were super cool i don't think that gave us any bias towards the game in particular because after just a couple of rounds deanna and i both saw the simplicity and elegance of the game design in birds of a feather this is a super easy to learn game where the mechanics are super well tied to the theme and it all just makes sense together. A game that's fun, well themed and educational as well as environmentally friendly. Yep. Really hard to find some negatives here on this one. So let's hear the pitch. What is the theme concept? So basically you're birders, so you want to see as many birds as possible. So you're going to have to go to different places, different habitats. You pick which bird you're going to go out looking for but then try to time it so you're there when other birds are there at the same time. After each round, you hear about other birds that were spotted. Then you plan your next trip to be sure to catch those lingering birds before they fly away. Like that, it fits the theme so well. Easy enough sounding, but of course, the count of available birds of each type is limited. Mm. So if you miss one, you may or may not get another chance to find that bird at that habitat. Yeah, my youngest daughter, Genevieve, uh, went on about this aspect of the game, the, the way the theme ties in for two to three days after playing it for the first time. She just kept saying, oh, that game just made sense, Dad. It just the, like, OK, like the eggs are the most common. There's three eggs for each one. Well, that makes sense because they're the easiest to spot, right? The eggs don't move. Everyone can find eggs. It's the flying birds that are hard to find. And the way the raptors scare away the other birds. That's something that might happen to a real birder. You're going to take a picture of your bird and then some other bird scares it away. I, I This, the way the theme tied to this game really cemented the gameplay in her mind. And it has become one of her favorite games because of this. While no birder, I've done enough wildlife photography to feel a familiarity with the theme and concepts that just hits home. Now, along with being simple to teach and easy to remember due to the thematic tie-ins, I love that this game plays up to seven players. Now, the more people you play with, it is a better chance of ending up everyone spots all the birds are close to it, and there's a higher chance of the tie. It's still great to have a quick playing strategic game that plays in under half an hour that plays seven players. Yeah, sitting down in the lobby of the hotel and learning and playing the game in minutes was a nice touch. I'm not good at the game, but it's not because it's hard to learn. I'm also impressed by how well the game did play at lower player counts, uh, especially when you use the proper rules, because in our first few plays, we missed the fact you reveal cards from the deck with playing with two or three. Though I got to say, like the first time Sean played in the hotel lobby there, the game still worked. 
and I still would be praising the game right now. would still get a positive review, but it is better when you play by the proper rules. Who knew? I especially like the more strategic two and three player variants, having now tried those. They really make the game feel more like a hobby game. And I recommend any experienced gamers use those variants as soon as possible. They play one game to kind of get it down, but immediately switch to that drafting system. And if you're playing with more than three players that are gamers and this is the first game they played, be sure to use that migration variant. Well, the depth of play from what is essentially a deck of cards here is very impressive. Yeah, I'm glad and, and surprised and happy. And thank you, Deanna, for convincing me to ask No Bright for a review copy of Birds of a Feather, Western North America. This is an easily overlooked game. I would have walked right by this. And honestly, this is the type of game we love highlighting. This is the kind of stuff I love to review. This is the stuff I like talking about in the hopes that more people hear about it. This is a very solid, quick playing game that does an amazing job of integrating the bird watching theme with card play. And as my daughter says, it just makes sense and it works. Now, all that said, this is not a deep thinky game. While there is definite strategy and tactics, you need to plan ahead based on your hand and what order you're going to play your cards in, and you're going to have to react to what the other players are doing. This is not a heavy game in any way, and this may be too light for some game groups. That said, it was Deanna, the heavy gamer in our group, who was won over by Birds of a Feather. So even some hardcore gamers may want to give this one a shot. I think that the size, flexibility, and environmental goals of both it and the publisher make this one a worthy game to pick up and keep in your back pocket. Even heavy gamers need some filler now and then, and this can fit the bill. Now, personally, what I want to do, and I'm like, I have no affiliation with these people except they gave me a review copy, but I want to go ambassador for this game. Now, I don't know how many people know it, but the region of Canada we live in, in southwestern Essex County, is a huge destination spot for birders. It is along one of the biggest migration routes in the entire world. Towns like Kingsville, Ontario, have built their entire industry around birders and seasonal visits. This is the game that I think should be sitting on the shelf at the Bandit Goose Brewery. And it should have been in our hotel room when we stayed at the Grove Hotel. And I should be able to buy a copy on the way to Point Pelee at the local gift shops. Like I just, this, this game, more so than Wingspan, which I have seen in these places, just fits the the casual player in in a much better way and perfectly fits the area in the theme even the birds you're seeing here are birds you can see here well that's it for our look at birds of a feather western north america meaning we can check off like quick playing thematic card game off of our board game spotting checklist now what's a highly thematic game you've played that just makes sense due to how well the theme is tied to the mechanics comment and tell us about it <laughs> 